I will be forever the myth. You're the king of kings, though. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a pecking order. The little peckers never mess with the big peckers. So I'm a rooster, and he's a chicken, so to speak. I remember uh, the 69 Olympia, too, when Arnold and Sergio were going back and forth. You were sitting right there, and you heard all the back and forth between oh, them. You know, like, hey, Monster, are you in shape this year? You know, and, but oh, you know baby, what, but, where do you see what I got? But yeah. you, know what, you know what's funny, though? I sit at home, and I read all these reports, and they all made up stuff or little mm -hmm. stories exaggerated because none of these people was there. Right, right. So I get a kick out of reading those stories. And yeah. it tells you how history, you can't really trust history no, by, reading, I know. by reading I know. one book. Yeah. You, you, you know, because people who don't know any better would not have checked necessarily what I wrote and I was there. Yeah. Yeah. But these guys write convincingly and they think so and so. Like the stories about Sergio. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember somebody asking me once who I thought was. Um, the greater champ, the, who who I thought was, was was the better bodybuilder, Sergio or Arnold, mm -hmm. and I said depends. He said, and he, he, he said, so he said depends on what. I said, well, Sergio had by far the greater physique, yeah, but Arnold was by far the greater champion, yeah. It's like that famous um, episode in Germany, was it in Munich, um, when Everybody thought Sergio should have won. Right, 72. An honor. I and so God, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. 72. And I remember Arnold interviewing Arnold in the office, you know, and, and, and putting it, because Arnold, oh, it's so ironic. Arnold always felt I had a particular thing for Sergio. Mm -hmm. And Sergio, on the other hand, figured I was Arnold's buddy from Europe. Okay. So I was always in between in between the camp. And what Arnold said to me was, I think Arnold knew Sergio. Arnold respected Sergio. He was in awe of Sergio. And he went out of his way to be good to Sergio. But yes. that's not what the record suggests. The record suggests that Arnold and, Fra and Sergio, Sergio were at their throats. Sergio had a problem with Arnold. Mm. I can understand why. I think to this day, that episode of the of the mr world in columbus ohio when yeah. lorimer paid paid for those guys a special aircraft to take them in that was a setup and sergio walked into it yeah yeah so so after losing to arnold uh, this is a week later or a few days later he appears against arnold and you expect to beat him yeah he so he walked into that he, he, all the problems he had with Joe Weider and with Dan Lurie, how can you choose Dan Lurie against Joe Weider? Now, the thing is, was Joe racist? How the hell can be Joe racist? And I was almost umbilically tied to Joe Weider. I, <laughs> I was as close to Joe Weider. One of the things I tell people to indicate how close I was to Joe Weider, Joe we, was, was no literary giant. Joe could barely spell, you know, my left school at 12. Mm -hmm. Of course, he, he read a lot of books. Yeah. But for the most part, Joe misinterpreted a lot of Nietzsche. I mean, that's the quality of stuff that man read, philosophy. But yeah. how the hell are you going to interpret philosophy when you dropped out of school at 12? <laughs> right, right. That's, that's why where all the mispronounced words uh, come from. Yeah. You know? But Joe, I remember being in New Jersey, far back as that. Was it New Jersey? Maybe not. Maybe it was California. No, it was New Jersey. We're still in New York. Okay. And and Joe had a photograph of Sergio. And he, he calls me to, to, to the, the desk in the in the department or whatever you call it now, where, where we did all the all the, all the artwork and stuff, the art department. Uh -huh. And Joe has those two he has Sergio's picture. <laughs> and it's, and it's, it's like a it's, it's like an Elvis fan of, of 13, a year old fan, but yeah. Elvis at his peak. Yeah. <laughs> pre pre army. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Right. And that is the that was that was Joe Weed, a grown man, and that was his enthusiasm over that 
picture. Yeah. And he's looking at the picture and he's shaking his head, Ricky, come on, come have a look at that. <laughs> so I'm looking at this and Joey's looking. He says, poor Arnold. <laughs> poor Arnold. Because he figured Arnold could never beat this guy. Right, right. But you know, the problem that arose, even in the last the last thing, Sergio would not compete. Everybody tried to Julie Lovina. Uh, sadly, I hear he passed away. Yeah, I heard that too. Yeah. Yeah. All of those guys who had connections with Sergio tried to get him to come to come back. Mm -hmm. And he only agreed to come back when I assured him it would not be fixed. It would not be fixed. Okay. Of course, the Sergio who appeared against Lee Haney and Kami and all those guys, those guys were all in super shape. They, they yeah. had the best. And Sergio had had two, three years off. He'd been shot. and all. Yeah. Sergio, Sergio was still no joke. Yeah. But Sergio really did not deserve any more than eighth place. Yeah. You, you know, and um, right away he figured, oh, well, just exactly what I expected. They've shafted me. And I don't know, I was inspired that night. I was standing at the front of the stage, out of, out of range, out of camera range, and I just knew, he came to the mic, and I just knew what was going to be. Madison Square Garden would have seen something they'd never seen before. I fully expected him to break that mic, toss it, maybe wow. even attack a judge. He wasn't that kind of, and I don't know why, what inspired it. His, his wife was in the second row, and I said, give me the baby. And I grabbed the baby and said, Sergio, kiss your baby. Here. And that picture is iconic now. Oh, yeah, for sure. In eighth place, receiving a check of $2,000. Contestant number one, Sergio Oliva. Mr. Olympia. That's what he is, Mr. Olympia. Right on, Serge. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Uh, no matter what, no matter what, I win them all, lose one, it doesn't mean anything. This what I have in my hand, it is nine pounds, 14 ounces, a baby boy, perhaps the next meth. Now, 
you should give it the applause and cooperate whoever's the winner because that's what we came here tonight give it the support to the best men the place that i took tonight it doesn't matter eight nine one seventeen twenty no matter what i will be forever the myth Before we carry on, ladies and gentlemen, before we carry on, we've heard many rumors that Sergio would be upset if he didn't win, that he's used to winning all the time and he can't lose and he doesn't like to lose. Well, we've heard the words tonight of a great champion, a, a winner when he's gracious and he loses, he's gracious to Sergio Oliva. He'll be back. You know, I remember the, uh, I, I was home, back home for years, and I got a letter from Sergio Jr. And he tells me, well, he, I was the baby. He says, Jesus, how time flies. I know. <laughs> you know oh, little crazy. baby and, and Sergio now. Yeah. And, and over the years, I've kind of studied those guys and wondered. He's had some problems, right? The parent, parenting problems and so yeah. on. Yeah. yeah, and um, he's 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 almost out of it now, isn't he? He's, 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 he's still competing, yeah, but he's not in the Olympia this year. He's not doing as well as you know he wants to. And I and I think it's a head trip. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a head trip. Yeah, and and he 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 he, he has a lot of problems also accepting Sergio on the one hand, the superstar, iconic yeah. person who was my dad, but then he was not my dad. Stuff. But yeah. he was not really my dad. That must be a hell of a burden to, to. I wrote him a, a couple of times, and he's always very um, grateful and, and 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 you know appreciative. Yeah. Of, of, of what I wrote, but hmm. shall we get to the the, to the monster brigade, or is that, or you still want to de deal with the the good old the, the wonderful days? Yeah, I still want to deal with the good old days. When did you uh, first meet Sergio, Rick? I met him at the um the, the first the 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 uh second Olympia. Okay. And I remember fifty six. Oh, that famous that famous episode. You know those dates, man. <laughs> what, what year was it? Sixty six. Sixty six. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because um, the, Larry won the second one. Larry won the first. Yeah, he won the first and the second. Yeah. First and second, right? Yeah. Well, well, well the, the, the first one, Sergio, or maybe the second. It's either the first or the second. But I met, I met, yeah, I met, I met him. I met the him. first one. It was uh, Larry, Harold Poole, and, and. Oh, Earl, I mean, his first for Sergio. Oh, yeah, first that was 66. Was yeah. Second. Yeah. First for Sergio. And we were in the dressing room about three o'clock. Okay. And I, I don't know why we were there, but uh, Arnold, myself, and, and Franco. Because we were the boys from Europe, so we were there, and Sergio was in there pumping up in this butcher's overalls, white butcher's overalls, yeah. all the way down to his to his ankles. Yeah, and and hi Rick, hi Ricky, you know Ricky Baby. No, is that what he said? Yeah, Ricky Baby. <laughs> Ricky Baby. That that was quite popular one right. time. <laughs> Probably Ricky Baby. Okay, so and he continued working out. I introduced him to Arnold and, and Franco. And three o'clock, and he's already pumping up for later. Can you believe this? Wow. I heard about that. Yeah. Yeah. So at one point, not paying too much attention to either guys, but they're studying him. Arnold was in this business of psyching people out. Yes. And he and he and uh, he and Franco would combine. Sometimes they would even bring me in on it to psych yeah. people, psych people out, you know. So Sergio, when he's through now, so he takes off the, 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 the over, overalls and he stretches. And Arnold's head went straight to Franco. <laughs> and, when, and when Sergio had left the room, Sergio's, uh, Franco says to Arnold, don't worry, Arnold. It's the lighting in here. 
And Anna's response was, fuck the lighting. He said, no fucking lighting can make anybody look like that. Right. <laughs> and I was, uh, I cracked up. You know, no fucking lighting can make anyone look like that. <laughs> but uh, but Frank was always doing this with Anna. Right, know? always pumping I mean, them up. That's a, that was another fascinating relationship. Yeah. That people, people only saw the magazine thing of it, but they don't know um, a lot of the things that went on privately. Anna loved Franco, uh, Franco was umbilically tied to Arnold. Arnold <laughs> caused Joe Weider to bring him over and everything. Right. But don't ever think it was easy being Arnold's friend. I, I say that to, to my friends as well. Uh, often, uh, my my best friends are the ones who get the worst from me. <laughs> you know, because you because you talk straight to them and you you know, it it happens. Well, yeah. well, Arnold was something like that with Sir, with um Franco, except it went a lot further than that. Have you ever seen a picture of Arnold on his knees in a knee pose mm-hmm. with Franco standing up? No, <laughs> it doesn't exist. Right. <laughs> And it's the opposite. It's exact opposite. Yeah. I have never heard anybody comment on that. Yeah, right, right. That's true. And that is worthy of comment. Yeah. You will if Arnold is on his knees, he's alone. Right, right. (laughs) Any knee pause, he's alone. Right, that's true. (laughs) And it was calculated. Yeah. Arnold was always when Arnold first was photographed by Artie Zella, Mm -hmm. he said to Artie. I couldn't wait to get to Santa Monica so you could photograph me and make me look bigger than the mountains. <laughs> because because Artie would take the shots low. Yeah. And so the physique would be over the you know the hills. Um, yeah. Okay? Even that, that's how meticulous Arnold was. Yeah. Arnold was meticulous, always calculating. Yeah. Another let, let me give you another episode of, of him. At one point. In fact, the same time of, of the Terminator thing I told you about earlier on, uh-huh. um, I interviewed him because he'd just done Conan. And while we were talking, this beautiful little puppy, Labrador, I, I guess it must have been, came into the room and said, wow, what a beautiful dog and all this. So when he got it and he told me, I think Cameron gave it to him, the, the, the producer. Yeah. Yeah. I gave it to him. And um, I said, well, what's it called? He says, what else? I said, what? He says, Conan. <laughs> so we talked for a while. I left. And then I'm driving down the Santa Monica freeway. Wow, I got an idea. I pull up to the side and park. And I call him. I'm all excited. And by the way, that is what makes the writing sing. And, you know, Nicole is sitting there next to me. And she's more or less saying she hasn't seen me as excited as this for a long time. So uh-huh. all, with all the uh, delay, delay, I'm obviously enjoying myself um, being, going back with you because yeah. you also know. So I, I'm all excited and I call him. I said, oh, I got the perfect title for, 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 for the interview. He says, what is it? So I said, Conan is a dog. He said, yeah, that's great. That's great. <laughs> so I go home and I was due to come to the Caribbean for, for a, a vacation. Uh-huh. Um, so about three days later, on the on, on the evening before my flight, he calls me up. He says, Rick, you know that thing about the, the, the article? You've done it, right? You've done the article. I said, yeah. Um, he said, I think you should change the title. I said, why? He says, you have a, those kind of fans that you have, and Americans think a certain way. They're going to read that title, and, and, and they won't even read the article. Because you said, and he's so right about that, you know. I yeah. don't know how those things occurred to Arnold with no training and no coaching. They were natural. He was right. so he was so perspicacious. He he he, he 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 so sensitive to stuff like that. Yeah. And he and he said, and he did it so many times. Of course, he stole hair and there too, like Muhammad Ali. Mm-hmm. So so I said, um, why? And he says. They'll read, they'll read the title and they're going to decide what you're saying there is the movie's crap. Mm. I says, nah. He says, he says, he said, but it's a risk, right? He yeah. said, we don't, we don't have to take that risk. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll change the title. 
I left a note to uh, Joe Weeder, sent a note to Joe. I called him and I said, I'm not happy with the title. I told him why. And the next morning I went on vacation. Normally when I came back from vacation, I have a ton of calls and everything else. Arnold called twice and the girl says to me, he's quite angry, uh, etc. So uh, he called me about the second day I was back. And he said, Rick, how could you do this to me? He said, do what? He said, we talked. I said, talk about what? And he said, have you read the article? I said, no. He said, well, read the article and he called me afterwards. So I read the article. I pick up the magazine. And it's no longer Conan is a dog. It now is Arnold is a dog. Oh. <laughs> so I'm shocked. Okay, so I said, Arnold is that nothing to me. I gave him all the details. So the next day, Arnold calls Joe Weeder. And the next day, and the next day, and the next day, I told Joe that he's unhappy with what happened, what happened there. And Joe, Joe just dis dismissed me, you know. Because ah. I told him his love affair really was with Ferrigno. Mm. But Ferrigno could not deliver the goods. Yeah. So it was so Arnold filled in. And this, this is not to say he didn't, he wasn't crazy about Arnold, but he loved the, 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 the the hum humility of Lou Ferrigno mm -hmm. and with the herring, so, yeah. So, uh, Ferrigno is not perfect, yeah. And, and that appealed to and always so nice. But Arnold was always ribbing somebody, yeah. pulling them out, ar arrogant as shit. So, yeah. so, so <laughs> while he loved Arnold, yeah, if only Arnold could be like Sergio, yeah, yeah, like a uh, like Ferrig, like, like, like Ferrigno, yeah. So, so. So Joe wouldn't take his call. So one day we were in the photo room, the photo library, sorting out photographs for the next issue. And the phone is right on the table that we're sharing, Joe and me. And the phone rings. I pick it up. And I said, is he there? And I handed it to Joe. It's for you. Oh, Arnold, I'm so sorry, Arnold. I, uh, how can I make it up to you, Arnold? I don't know what happened, Arnold. That went on for a, a good five minutes. And evidently, what, what can Arnold is done? So yeah. he, the phone was barely back in the crater when Joe says, that cocksucker, he says. <laughs> I, I apologize, but it's done. <laughs> Another lesson, another lesson for Rick Wayne. Yeah. When people tell you they're sorry, check it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they've done what they've wanted to do, and now they're, oh, I'm sorry, and they expect you to forgive, forgive them. They yeah. have to pay for that. Right, right. Not another lesson, another lesson learned. What did Arnold think about that article you wrote, Arnold? Uh, saint or devil? My God. You I, that one, right? I forgot to know this. <laughs> I don't think he was too happy with it. I remember we were at, at, at the bicycle uh, restaurant in, in Santa Monica, and um, he, he he's inviting, but he, but he does those inviting things so he can talk. Mm -hmm. and, and he was very very pissed off about it. Very very pissed off. He says, "But I said, but only I give two sides." He said, "Yeah, but that was much more about the devil." I right. right. <laughs> <laughs> I said, "So it was much." Diane Bennett was there. And Diane Bennett was close to him. And yeah. you think, but yeah, that's fair, huh? No, there was much <laughs> more about the devil than, than there was a saint. So to hell with the, what you said about the, the devil he was con concentrating on. Right. <laughs> and uh, shortly, as a matter of fact, and, uh, shortly after his wedding, uh, well, us magazine, I don't think it's, it's there anymore. Us magazine, oh. all the magazines have disappeared. Yeah. Us magazine did a, a spread on the wedding. And among the things in, in, in the story was Arnold being asked um, about Kurt Valdheim, mm -hmm. who was the general, Secretary General of the UN. And he was having problems because they had discovered he had Nazi connections and so on yeah so the so the reporters at the wedding cardinal arnold who was a master at handling reporters a master and they asked him well what do you think is going to happen to your friend kurt fellow austria huh? and he said uh he's out kurt is having a bad press but it'll blow over everything will be all right at the time i was a major radical wow 
almost a Black Panther. Almost. Yes. <laughs> not quite, not quite. And um, it pissed me off. Yeah. So I wrote in miscellaneous what he had said to us. And I said, I agree with him. And I expect all the stories about Idi Amin and Bukasa and all these ogres, ah, they were so bad press, it'll, be blow, it'll blow over. <laughs> Arnold was so pissed off, I didn't hear from him for about four months. Wow. And, and normally when we traveled from, from, from Los Angeles to Columbus, Ohio, we would share the same seats, okay. uh, opposite seats, you know? Yeah. We, I saw him, he ignored me, I ignored him. We got on the plane, he went to his own suite, and I went to mine. We got to Columbus, and, the, and usually every, the reporters are there, and they would check us together. And yeah. when He picked up his, equip, his, his stuff, did not go on the bus, took a, took a taxi, and went up. Then the next day at the pre-judging, after the pre-judging, there are all those reporters now. And, and then suddenly one guy says, what's with you two guys? <laughs> because normally, normally, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, so I said, um, no, he asked, he asked Arnold, what's with you two guys? And Arnold says, ask him. So mm -hmm. the guy says, what's wrong? What's, what's going on, Rick? I said, I don't know. So when they left, he says to me, and you know, this monster big guy and everything, Arnold's in a voice that made me feel like a turd. He says, start complaining. So I says, well, you didn't complain about the Us magazine and that article, all that bullshit there about Kurt Vallev. He says, Ricky, they paid for my wedding. They paid all the expenses. Mm. What do you want me to do? You want me to start get, getting on with those people? Yeah, welcome. But Ricky, you're my friend. Mm. Oh, <laughs> oh. I felt I had betrayed my mother, my whole family, everybody mm. dear wow. to me. I had betrayed. And then we, we shook out. I still have the photograph of us making up. I have it in my in, in my oh, really? wow. I still wow. have that. Yeah. But I don't think nearly enough has been written about honor. Mm -hmm. Um because there's so little of people the writers know about the parts of him that are not obvious. Yeah. And always they're dealing with Arnold, the Terminator, Arnold, the movie star, Arnold, the champion. They're not dealing with Arnold, Arnold. Yeah, yeah. You know, say like all the stories about his mother and his father and all, those things have become legend. Yeah. And most of them only have true. Mm -hmm. It's like the pump is the pump is like coming. Yeah, Remember that famous one. That's yeah. that was that's not an Arnold original. Right. That was given to him by Butler. Yeah. But Arnold made it his own. The first yeah. article I wrote about Arnold in England when I was suggesting to Joe Weider to get him over and so on and so on, because I would I was the one who recommended um, that Joe Weider bring him over. Okay. Uh, and um, the title of the article was, "If Hercules were alive today." he'd be called Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right, right. That was the very first article I wrote about him. Yeah. I have heard Arnold say that so many times to reporters. Yeah. Like, a, like it's an original. Why not? <laughs> yeah. So Muhammad Ali did it a, a number of times with Archie sure. Moore. Yeah. So, you know, so what the hell? Do you still talk to Arnold, Rick? I have not talked with Arnold in a long time, but every time he does something special, he will send me a book. He invited <laughs> me over to the M Franco's Memorial. Oh, and I was okay. I was gonna go, but man, with all the, with my bad back, I got a very bad. Uh, oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it even affects mobility. Mm. Um, you know, and age too, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but all I, I I I hurt my back in a car accident while on vacation here. I oh. did not and did nothing. You remember when I didn't enter the Olympia because of my shoulder? In 76, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my God. <laughs> <laughs> and that year, oh man, training advances. And I, I, I remember Frank Zane saying to a reporter on stage, I what was that this uh this what was the type this show? There was there was Wild World of Sp Wide World of Sports. Yeah, Wide World of Sports, yeah. And they were interviewing Frank and asked him who was his greatest competition there, who did he fear most, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And he said, I hope he doesn't mind, but Rick Wayne, who is in a bed in Los Angeles right now, that is what I was in 
incredible shape. Wow. And I did and I did very few pictures. Very, very and I remember what's his name now? Mexican guy who did who died, but he, he did a lot of pictures. He, he was a photographer for oh I forget his name now. Mexican. He, he died. A short he wouldn't know my guess. Died recently. Huh? He died recently. Oh no no no. He died a, a, a good 20 years ago. Oh okay. Okay. Um, so he begged me to come let's do pictures I did what one or two and that was it okay. but I was in such great shape I mean Vince and all the guys yeah, uh, yeah. figured yeah. that nobody could touch because I really did train for that Yeah, and I was doing a one arm row and, uh, and I just felt a zap in my left arm and neck I went to Dick Tyler and Dick Tyler put me on a machine no x-ray nothing and mm-hmm. this guy to cut a long story short, by the time I go to home, I couldn't raise my arm. Mm. And, and, and the spasms, if somebody had given me a pill out of this crap, I would have taken it. Wow. But, uh, but, the, but, it but it was worth it to have Frank say that the, the guy he was most worried about yeah. was Rick Wayne. Bill Reynolds wrote a lot about that, too. Do you remember when Frank had that dream where he was, I think he chopped somebody's I, head I, with a with a mask on and then he I don't I don't re- I don't remember the dreams at all yeah I don't remember the dreams at all that, that, that those stories I don't remember those details yeah you know, I, I haven't read them in a long long time yeah I think it was right before the 76 Olympics said he had but, a, he, but he had a dream for everyone right yeah yeah everyone he, he, he had this axe and he chopped this guy's head and it was you <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember that. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. You yes, had the yes. pain in your neck. That was yes, so that's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I yeah, interviewed right. Frank like a year ago or two, and I inter- I asked him about that. He said he didn't remember it, but I, I got the magazine where he <laughs> exactly. said it. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah. It's been a while. I mean, I I forgot it, but I wrote it, so yeah. no surprise that he had, he'd, have, he'd have forgotten it. But Arnold Arnold was generally okay with it. He trusted me with his articles. Yeah, it's just one or two. Because at, at that time, he's gotten so into the movies and gotten so sensitive, yeah, yeah. That, you know, so very, very competitive. Uh, so did you, I mean, did you see him change, Rick, as a person as he got more? I, I talked with Balik. Yeah. About a couple of years. John and I good good friends. I, he, you interviewed him too, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 And Balik, I, I asked him, I said, I've been watching Arnold delivering all those um anti-Trump, um, yeah. pissing, on, pissing on racism and, and, and the underdog and whatever. I said, is that real? And John said to me, Rick, you know, you know Arnold better than I did. I picked him up at the airport. It was he who picked Arnold up at the airport when he first came to, to California. Wow, okay. So that's how far back they go. And he reminded me that. He said, I picked this guy up and etc. But I don't think anybody knows Arnold as well as you do because I get to know people that way. I yeah. don't just deal with the superficial. I go with the psyche. I, 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 I get to know people in, in ways other people. I have my own perspective on everybody. Yeah. You know? And that's what I write about. Yeah. So he said, you, you know better than, better than I do. But I call these people for an interview for some time with Arnold. And I, I wanted only 10 minutes because Arnold's so busy. So, and he said, I spent about two and a half hours with Arnold. Arnold stopped everything and talked with him. for two, two. So he says, I believe he has undergone a kind of a road to Damascus conversion. Mm-hmm. And he, that he really believes, he, he, he's serious, he's genuine. So I, I'm, I'm prepared to believe it because he's, 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 he's even if he doesn't mean it in his soul, it comes across like he means it and it, it has its effect. Yeah. I yeah. thought he was very, very, very brave when he talked about, um, what was it? Uh, he, he says, fuck freedom. What was it he said? Screw your freedoms, yeah. Screw your freedoms. I empathize with that because only a few weeks ago, actually, I got pretty annoyed with St. Lucia, the people of St. Lucia, but their laziness and, and mm-hmm. not standing up for anything. And I, I said, I'm fed up being the one to stand up for everything. And I ended it up without thinking. And I said, and screw all of you. Yeah. And mm-hmm. later on, I, I kind of, I didn't regret it. I meant that. Yeah. 
And it was great to see Arnold stand up behind what he said, because yeah. what he was saying is screw your freedom, but it doesn't end there. It talks about you, you are putting your idea of freedom ahead of lives and whatever. Yes, yeah, that's what so he meant. Yeah. You, you can take him, you can take him um, uh, as literally, or you can take him as that you're speaking metaphorically, or he was just whatever. You can do what you want with that. Yeah. But I, but what, what, what I admired was that he didn't try to squirm out of it, and uh, well, he, he stood by it. Yeah, yeah. And I think those people who uh, spoke against him were people who were who were not in love with him in the first place. Yeah, yeah. Because even though, even if you might have been pissed off, and I know Americans, <laughs> I, <laughs> I I know Americans and freedom. Yeah, yeah, you know, right, right. People who have not lived in in, in mainstream America don't yeah. really appreciate how you guys. But freedom means to you guys. Yeah. You know, ironic. Because while America is so hot, oh, I'm going to get you to come with, with a, a controversial bomb here, John. Get ready for it. <laughs> while America is so into the freedom, the free country, the, the, the land of what? Land of the free and all that. All, oh, all the great, stuff. Great. <laughs> it appears to certain people that that freedom is only worth something when they are free. Right, right. I, I, okay, not necessarily the freedom for other people, and right, that, that, right, that's as right. diplomatic as I can get. Yeah, exactly. If you appreciate freedom, appreciate it for everything. But you know, you, I don't know if it's because you, you, if you, you dare not ask me, I, I don't know you, but but I, I want to ask you, you can, you can ask me any question you want. Um, because the matter of, of color and race and, and whatever, oh, yeah, I want to get to your uh, your, your famous article about our black bodybuilders being treated fairly, the cover story. I want to say to Nicole, while she's watching this, and I'm on air, she's a journalist. Uh, and I want, to, I want to, to use you, if you don't mind, sure. as when you, a guy has done his research, how interesting it is to talk to him. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and she interviewed Derek Walker, the Nobel Prize winner, once. Uh, I will not tell you that story. <laughs> <laughs> <She's sitting laughs> but you know that you know the stories well um what was it uh, the, what was the one you just brought up our black bodybuilders tre being treated fairly and they had a, a cover and, it was a cover and, with yeah, robbie and, and yeah and, uh, yeah and it was about i i, I wrote more it, was, one. it was right after the 77 olympia when robbie and, I, and I was i i remember writing one that i that i am very proud of because the lighting it shows was what I concentrated on. Oh, okay. And I thought it was controversial, even among the the the, the black bodybuilders of, 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 of America. They never considered me black. Mm -hmm. They like to say, "Oh, he's from the islands," and they were talking as the islands they meant Hawaii because most of them weren't familiar with the Caribbean islands. Okay. So I, I went through that kind of crap as well. I'm not, I'm not black. Of course I'm black. But uh, black for them would be Robbie Robinson. And yeah. a number of times these guys would have meetings because they had problems in their minds, about, at least about being treated unfairly because they were black and whatever. And they never invited me to those meetings. Number one, they should have because I would be able to write about it and, and, and do something about it. I had enough influence in reader, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But it, but uh, it never bothered me. And that whole race thing is such crap anyway. Uh, people dealing with shades and whatever. At the end of the day, bodybuilding is not racist. But it's nice to be able to shout racism if you're black enough and you lost. Mm. Robbie was fantastic when Robbie was on. Yeah. But Robbie was enigmatic because Robbie was never in control of Robbie. Mm. Okay, yeah. Whereas Frank Zane and those other guys would go to the, with the lighting man to check out the lights for their skin tone, Robbie mm -hmm. would be sleeping and not necessarily ordinary sleep, if you get my drift. <laughs> right. Okay? So then he would come and the photographs would be taken and you could barely see him because the lighting was set up for light to skin. Yeah, yeah. Mm, so he did himself a disservice. And I wrote about that and it, that changed. 
Wendy Mealy and the rest of the guys took that on and they changed it. And now, what a show. Well, the, the Olympias that I saw, those were productions. Yeah. They were really good. I don't know right now. I think more, it's more like a market now with, with booths. And- yeah, it, it's interesting you mentioned the lighting because there is this big controversy in today's bodybuilding, and especially like at all the pro shows, but especially the Olympia too, because they have all the, they have these really beautiful stages, but they've got all this stuff going on behind them, like a video screen, you know, and they got the sponsors stuff flashing. And back in the Columbus days, you know, the Mr. Olympia was just that black background. And I think everybody thought, that was the perfect lighting for bodybuilding. I never thought there was any any um, racism in bodybuilding. There was in the AAU. In the because AAU, I, because, yeah. Because I, sure. I, I, I dealt with some of that myself. I, I, I was in Paris representing England in the Mr. Europe. Yeah. And I remember Bob Hoffman, who I never really had much time for. Uh, Bob Hoffman came up to me. He was with Val Bas- Vasilev. Val Vasilev, yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah. And um, it was Mr. America, and he, he, he hoped that. And, and I, I, I don't remember why he was there. Maybe it was for the Mr. Universe. That was the I, uh, F, FIHC? F, I, yeah, yeah, FIHC, yeah. yeah. That was the first one you went in, right, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's right. And um, I should have won. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Abdul El Gindi, nice guy, though. But the guy was like, I should have won. Had that. That's not the only one I should have won. Right. <laughs> you, know that, you, know that, you know that shot, that iconic shot with Arnold and Franco? And yeah, the, the, I yeah. should have won that damn contest. Yeah. But, but I didn't care. I really didn't care. I was far more interested in writing about the excitement and, and whatever. And yeah. that picture, that picture, there they were three or four takes of that picture. Okay. And that, let me dismiss that, ra- that racism thing quickly. There, there was no racism in, in, in bodybuilding. And Joe Weider didn't give a damn who won the contest. And if you think about it, whoever won the contest, Joe Weider would promote him, on the, etc. So yeah. he wins anyway. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It, it didn't really matter. You put him on the cover of, of, of the magazine and give him all the give him all the stuff and get him with the contracts and everything out. So yeah. Joe Reed had no real reason. Like the, the, the booing contest, Joe said right there to me that this is terrible. I'm I'm leaving. And he was on his way. I said, you got to stand here. And they wanted him to come on the stage anyway, but he was yeah. leaving yeah. because he yeah. figured Calendar should have won. Roy was in awesome shape. He was, yeah. I was there. Yeah, I, was, I saw that show. Yeah. Oh, you were there for that. I was there, yeah. Uh, and and which Arnold later said, and Arnold, Arnold was recovering from from Australia, right? Right, right. So so when when and he oh he went through hell with that. Yeah. I, I I did some interviews with him, talked with him. He was very very hurt, by, very bruised by all of that. Yeah. But 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 don't let me forget about the Olympia. But he but I remember him saying to me after we I, I interviewed him and he was really down, and he said. But the positive of that guy, you know, he's, as broken as he was, as I was walking out, he says to me, but you know what, Rick? Eight years from now, 10 years from now, nobody will be talking about what happened, etc. They will just say, Arnold won the Olympia eight times. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You know, you know a, a lot of strong mind yeah. it, it, it takes to do that. Yeah. Now get back to what I told you not to forget about the Olympia. Which one? We were just talking about the Olympia. I said keep that thought. Oh, about the uh, the black bodybuilders. Yeah, there, there, there was no racism in there. Yeah, none at all. And and I did the magazine, and I could tell you, Joe Wheeler has never said to me, "Don't write about this person or that right. person." Yeah. Never. Yeah, Sergio yeah. with all the stuff, Joe never spoke one word to me and close to racism. He yeah. just thought, and, and you know, Joe Weeder and Arnold, so many times, there's that picture of um, Maria, uh, Sergio, and taking at World Gym. The World Gym, yeah, I just saw that. All of those <laughs> pictures have a history of story behind it. Yeah. I was there with Sergio, really babying him, you know, because he, he, uh, after the contest, he was. In, there's a picture of us walking from LA, out the LAX. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So all of that. So I, we were practically babying him, and Joe, we paid for everything and whatever. So, and Joe didn't even come to the session because he didn't want to upset anything. And bang, 
Arnold is coming up the steps with Maria in tow. And he introduces, well, he, he shook Sergio's hand, and yeah. Sergio shook his hand, but, yeah. you know, with, the, with daggers in Sergio's eyes. And, of course, Sergio switches totally to Maria. Yeah. It's yeah. Nice. Okay. Rick, was that, was that after the Olympia or before? That was after New York. Oh, after that was after '84. Okay, so, I, I, so he, so he I always from, thought that was like Sergio came to California when he was getting ready for it, and everybody. Oh like, no, no, it was after the contest. That was after. It was after, it was after the yeah. contest. I flew with him from New York. Did Arnold? Did Arnold know that Sergio was going to be there that day? Well, you know, Joe, Joe, Joe Gold may have told him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he, Arnold came, and Arnold. Thought, oh, Arnold was ready to shower this guy because he was a hero to Arnold. Yeah, yeah. And, and I remember Arnold saying to him, "You stick with Rick, and um, Rick will write and promote you, and blah 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 blah. You know, and yeah. whatever I can do." And Sergio's reaction, only now you know, Ricky is a great writer, which was stupid. <laughs> yeah. Because I've been writing about Arnold ever since we were in Europe. Yeah, yeah. And, and Arnold trusted me with his stories better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. So to suggest to him, to Arnold, that Arnold didn't really like me or my writing. He said, yeah. only now you know, Rick, you can write, you know. Yeah. So we let that go. And um, But it went right over Arnold's head. He did, it didn't bother bother him. And Arnold talked to Joe, to Joe about treating Sergio well and giving him whatever the, he, he got the contracts or whatever, yeah. whatever Joe paid him for endorsements at that time or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's the same as with um, Ferrigno. He, he never told in all the debate that was going on and, for, and for, for Ferrigno was putting him down. And he could have said, look, man, shut the hell up. I got you this thing, even though you don't know it. He never did that. Yeah. So, so that is, th those are the aspects that make the whole man. Somebody said, somebody important said that if you're going to judge a, a man, don't do that before you have considered his good points. Mm, okay. <laughs> don't start thinking of his bad points. Yeah. Because yeah. if you only think of bad points, you won't even go to the good points. So yeah. con consider his good points at least before you go dismissing him for the bad. Yeah, so, yeah. And, and Arnold suffers a bit of that. When, when, yeah. Arnold, when, when he was running for governor, I was saying, my, tough, my phone at, in St. Lucia did not stop ringing. Or every paper, the beef from, 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 from San Francisco, everybody looking for dirt. Ah, uh, really? Everybody looking for dirt. Yeah. And there was, there was the famous one that Wendy Lee wrote, um, and he's, I think he, we talked about apartheid. I think he had said that um, if the blacks take over um, in South Africa, Africa, that too will fail like all the other black states had failed. Now, that can sound racism, racist. Yeah. This is the problem I have. Yeah. Africa at that time was, a, I may still be. The, the problem of, of Africans against Africans may still be. I don't know. I don't keep up with this anymore. Mm -hmm. But but what he said, though uncomfortable, was a hard truth. But that caused a whole stir. And then I went to England. I remember going to England. And I got a call from an affiliate of ABC te uh, television from uh, on the state. They had an affiliate in London. Mm -hmm. And they sent, sent out this, this, this limo to pick me up and everything to interview me. And near the end of the interview, the, the producer then says to, to the guy interviewing me, you haven't asked him about Arnold being a racist. <laughs> and, I, and so he put, put the question, do you think Arnold is a racist because of the, what he said about South Africa? I said, I said, it's interesting that nobody ever asked me what my response to Arnold was. Because if you heard my response, you would think I was the racist. Mm. They never asked but of course, I'm referring to Austria and Austria's roots and a certain gentleman with a mustache. Yeah. Okay. So th that was my answer to you. But Arnold, Arnold and I talked about everything. Some subjects we didn't talk about because they might cause a, a stir if he was in the mood. Okay. For example, 
well, this is a lot earlier. When Arnold first, came, right up the time he was doing this famous um, Hercules in New York, that bomb. Uh, yeah, yeah. So there we were at the Sheraton Hotel in the dining dining room. Myself, Franco, a few others, and Joe Weida. Betty Weida was at the time in California. So Joe Weida had was had his his, his, his penthouse in there, and he had this blue Cadillac. Okay. Arnold, so Arnold walks in. Hi, guys. And he goes straight to the hat check girl who had just come in a few minutes earlier, a black girl, a hat check. He goes to the girl, talks to her, comes back, goes again, and then he comes back to Joe. Joe, can I borrow your car and your, and, 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 and your, and your penthouse? <laughs> I mean, if Arnold asked Joe to jump up the, time, the, 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 the Times building, he, he would they were done. So it gives him the keys and, and Arnold is gone. So the next morning, I learned, by the way, Joe was sitting by himself for a long time. <laughs> the next morning, Arnold comes to the office, sits down, and he's talking to me about this wonderful time he had with this girl. Yeah. And bragging. So, and then he gets up, and as he's going out my cubicle, he says, Enrique, she says, I am the best she ever had. <laughs> and he walks out the cubicle, then pokes his head back, including the black guys. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, no, that was coming, right? Oh, oh those stories. <laughs> but, but, oh, I don't was Because there were times I would say to him, I can't believe what's happening to you, man. Yeah. You know, because I knew all the way back in London and, and Germany. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, all, all, look what's happening. And it's just happening. Everything can be tumbling his way. This guy can't do anything wrong. He, I know. He's, he's, he has the guy with the Midas touch and everything. So I said, look, I can't believe this. You know? what, what, what is it about you, man? And he says, well, I am good looking. I have the greatest physique in the world. I am smart. And again, he walks out. And he pokes his head. The same way. And I'm white. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, that is the humor. Uh, he knew the kind right. of stuff. Like he the, the the push, right? <laughs> so, he, so he will hold that until he gets out of the office, the like, cubicle, <laughs> and he's on his way out. Right, so he, right. he drops that, but, but, but he's a, gener a generous guy. You know, I would yeah. ask Arnold for interviews. And the, imagine this, the control Arnold had as well. How many bodybuilders would get an opportunity to do interviews for Flex or Muscle and Fitness at a time, and they would say no, uh, which for later? And if they, if, if they get an opportunity to be in there every day, they would be in there. Not yeah. Arnold. It got to a time when Arnold would not do interviews and tell me, let's hold it. Because he had something to promote. Yeah. I mean, yeah. when you think of Arnold's background, you wonder where he acquired this right. kind of right. perspicacity, you know. And, and that's what you don't hear people talking about. Right. They just figure, well, Arnold was, was a different kind of bodybuilder. Arnold, Arnold himself is a different kind of man. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. what made him the champion he was. Okay, that's what makes him, who got him into the politics. That's mm -hmm. what made him. In, who the hell knows where Arnold got the line about girly men? Yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody <laughs> was talking about the girly men, girly men. Right, right, right. You know, and and his thing with Trump, he could have chosen to to bury the hatchet with Trump. Yeah. Oh no, he, he does the exact opposite. Right. He's he's not afraid. To take chances. Yeah, yeah. And, I know. and and when he does it, he does it with everything he's got. Yeah, yeah. Arnold yeah I, was, I, I, I've always been a big fan of Arnold. And like I even like I remember, I don't know if you remember heard the story. He was supposed to be on the first time on the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. He had been on the Tonight Show before with other the like the co-host or with the other guests, you know, like the featured guest. But he this was the first time with Johnny and his book, uh, Education of a Bodybuilder had just come That's out. right. I remember that. Yeah, and Johnny wanted to pose with Arnold. And Arnold said, Arnold told his people, he said, no, I'm going out there with a suit. He goes, I'm retired from bodybuilding. I'm not doing it. 
How many bodybuilders hit 30 not, they were, they would have turned down the Tonight Show? I mean, these bodybuilders today would do anything, to be honest. There's a, there's a famous picture of myself, a, a guy called Jimmy Savile. I don't know if, you, if you've heard of Jimmy Savile. Oh, yeah, in the Nava Universe, yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. And, of course, you know his name is Dirt now. Yeah, yeah. Because, oh, right. Because, on Netflix, yeah. Well, at the time, he was iconic. Yeah. And I did a, a BBC interview with him. And he went so well. He was so kind. Invited him to lunch with my manager. He said, no, 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 no. He said, I'll tell you what. I'll do a picture with you if you take your shirt off. And because he, and he, he's a comedian, huh? Yeah. On top of everything. And he took, it, 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 we took our shirts off and he did the silly pose. And I did, and the picture is iconic. It's a real conversation piece. People, you, oh, you knew Jim Osama, you know, you know etc. I have those pictures, iconic. Yeah. It's like a picture with Rolling Stones and uh, yeah. All, yeah. Have all, all those, those iconic pictures, unless they tell a story, not worth keeping. And almost every photograph I have, there's a story behind it. Mm -hmm. There's a story. And, but getting back to honor, bodybuilding will, all of those guys who imagine themselves replacements for honor, you're kidding me. And, and, and I thought he was so bold and ballsy to speak out against what they have done to our bodybuilding. Yeah, yeah. And I think bodybuilding was at its greatest in my time, Arnold, and maybe a couple of years. And I want to say quickly as well, Sean should have won the Olympia. I can't, I can't figure, and when I see those pictures, mm -hmm. you know, Sh Sean Ray should have won the Olympia at least once. Yeah, I agree. Labrador as well. He didn't win, did he? La Labrador. No, never he won. never won. Exactly. Yeah. He, he didn't win. And who else? But, but these two guys, Flex Wheeler, Flex Wheeler yeah. I, I loved. I thought Flex was the last, and it's very sad it was happening to him right, yeah. right now. Yeah. But yeah. then again, it's like Arnold said, you want it bad enough, you take it. And that's what they did. I'm glad that um, Sean and Labrada um, have been... I worry about Labrada's son. Yeah. He came, he came here as a baby. I had a yeah. show here. And, I remember, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I worry about his son, and I hope uh, his father is, 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 is really checking him out. Like, this guy Walker, come on. Yeah, Nick Walker. Yeah, he trains at my gym, actually. I mean, do you want to look like that? I know, right? Yeah, but I thought oh, no, I don't. I won't put you on the spot for that. <laughs> you probably would say yes anyway. Um, but <laughs> but Arnold, Arnold spoke out against it, and he still talks about it. Yeah, I think it's right. Yeah, I mean, a guy's dying, and it really pisses me off when I read on Facebook. It is with a heavy heart. The, the very guys who are promoting this this crazy drug culture in bodybuilding. Yeah. It is with a heavy heart we have to report so and so and so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, they're, they're complicit. So many guys, some of them with really great physiques, dying at thirty something. I mean, this is insane. Yeah, seems like a like a runaway train. It just keeps getting bigger. The geek being bigger and bigger and bigger every generation, every ten years. And it's like, how do you there stop? Were, it? There were also far more opportunities in mainstream America and mainstream world around that time. Pumping iron. Yeah. Really did a great thing for body for bodybuilding, did, and those yeah. guys have, I mean, general. What do you call it? Generation Iron. Yeah, that is that is the days pumping pumping iron. Yeah, they tried to do a movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what's interesting, Rick? When I started bodybuilding in '77, that's the year uh, Pumping Iron came out, and a couple of years later, I was competing in teenage bodybuilding shows, and they were packed. I mean, 35, 45, 55 teenagers in a show. And now teenage bodybuilding is gone. So I think the reason why it was so big before was because all those young guys that were my age, we all saw pumping iron and we all wanted to be bodybuilders. We all want to look like Arnold where today's bodybuilders, they don't want to look like the guys today. So the teenage bodybuilding is gone now. So, so, or they're not what, competing, so, so what is the, what is the attraction of, of, of the Olympia now? Because I'm told that it's hardly any applause. As yeah. compared as a compared to how like it was yeah, in New York. I mean, in New York, you only had to know the name and the yeah. place exploded. I know, I know. Yeah. Or look at the shows in Columbus back in the late 70s. Exactly. Amazing. Amazing. But I hear that's that that's gone. Yeah, yeah. And the posing is, is not good at all. You know, so oh, posing man. doesn't uh 
but they don't, but, the, but, they don't but the perhaps audience. perhaps uh, um, the one I detest most, and I've always been in trouble with that, the female bodybuilders. Yeah. Even when it started off, uh, I wasn't really crazy about it because I've always had this ideal that uh, the ideal woman, woman with a woman's woman's strength was not um, uh, with the size of her muscles. Mm -hmm. I happen to believe females as a superior gender anyway, but that's for another show. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> the, the strength of a woman is not in her muscles. Yeah, yeah. And I was in I was in California uh, long enough to 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 hear the, these top female bodybuilders sounding like bass guys, you know, right, 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 and and and, and more that I can't talk about on, on your, your show, but I didn't think, and I got a lot of heat from people like Steve Wenerstrom and mm -hmm. and, and so well, other guys well, yeah. gave, gave me a, gave me a lot of heat, but I wonder if, how Steve feels about what is going on right now. Is Steve still around? You know. I don't think so. No, I, I, I don't okay. know if he passed away. I, I never hear his name anymore. So okay, I mean, like that back shot where they stick their butts out. And yeah. What the hell is that about? I know, I know. What is that supposed to depict? Uh, or to, what, what is what is it they're showing the judge? I, I think they're trying to show their ha hamstrings. Yeah. Hamstrings tie in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Corey showed her hamstrings. Yeah, exactly. Laura yeah. showed her hamstrings. Laura Bowen showed her hamstrings. Yeah. You know, I, that that's a really awkward looking it, pose. It's interesting in your book, too, because you talked about how uh, when Bud Parker was doing his shows, they he created that Miss Americana. Yeah. And yep. then he started selling out the shows when he brought that in, right? That's right. That's so you right. said a lot of those girls didn't even work out. They Like the one was drinking uh, whiskey or something when of course, you went out on stage, you know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you were so well researched, you know. Yeah, John. so well researched. What, what did you think of Rachel? I know you did. You give her the name uh, Delish Rich, Delish <laughs> Delish McDish. Oh, McDish. <laughs> oh, they really set me up one night in New York, though. Um, we were at, at this show, and Rachel, Bev Francis, uh, and a couple others invited me on stage because of my birthday oh okay i knew there was some kind of conspiracy <laughs> because because all of them because rachel wanted to, in a nice way um rachel enjoyed the magdish thing rachel rachel yeah. was, was a goddess as far as the fans were concerned yeah so i went upstage and they were wishing me happy birthday and saying all and then all of a sudden they smashed that cake in my face you know and and everybody went but I knew it was coming. I just, I just, I just played along with that. <laughs> but th those were nice, great old days. Yeah, yeah. Now I don't see any of that. I'm no. not even, I, I don't even want to see the guys' pictures. I, I don't want to see that. I mean, I, 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 why anybody would want to look like that? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I don't know. You know, it's, 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 and knowing what they have to do to do that. 